Hey friends, happy day. Today we are working on making a few goodies for our dog. If this is your first video watching here, welcome. My name is Ashley. We live in a very small home on a very small city lot and we are trying to make use of every square inch. We have one dog. He is a male Newfoundland and he is six years old. He will be seven in November. And I want to try making a couple different recipes of some treats and also some homemade dog food. I don't feed, well, we don't feed our dog homemade food all the time. We believe in keeping our dog's diet really varied and that includes using hard food, different varieties of hard food. And we also incorporate fresh food from our kitchen. If for some reason you do wanna try making your own dog food for your dog or your pet, I recommend checking with your veterinarian just to make sure that you get all of their macronutrient and micronutrient needs met in the food that you're making. So today we're just going to do a simple food in the Instant Pot. We're going to put in some rice, some steak that I'm not a big fan of that we have and we need to get out of our freezer from a beef and some vegetables and it's just simple cook it in the Instant Pot and I have a way of storing it and I'll walk you through. And then two different treat recipes. One is a peanut butter pumpkin and one is a peanut butter carrot, which is very similar. It has pumpkin in it as well. And there's not a whole lot of difference between the two, but I'm really excited and I think he's gonna like them. But at the end, we'll see which one he likes better. So let's go ahead and get the food started first because I just wanna get that going in the Instant Pot and that could just kinda of get forgotten for a little while. Okay, for getting this food going today, like I said, I'm gonna be using rice and I'm gonna use a mixture of white rice and brown rice, but you can use anything like, if you have oats and things like that, you can certainly use that as well. Um, and as far as meat goes, you can use pretty much any kind of meat as far as I'm aware. Um, we're using this meat that we want to kind of move out of our freezer to make room for some other things we have coming. Um, and normally I would add in things like the vegetables right now with it in the Instant Pot, but I'm using my smaller one today and I don't wanna cram it too, I don't wanna pack it in too much. So I'm going to just do the meat and the rice together. Also, you can you certainly use any broth in here, which would make this even more nutritious. Just being mindful that that broth does not have things like onions and garlic and things that dogs aren't supposed to have. So especially if it's just like a straight bone broth or a stock, that would be great in here. I have found in the grocery store many times turkey backs, ton of meat still on them, and you can use those to make a stock and then put it back in to cook the grains with the meat that you can pull off. You can get a tremendous amount of meat off of those backs. Okay, we got everything in the Instant Pot. I added some water and the steaks were so hard frozen that and, and big they didn't fit in here. So I actually had to microwave them for a few minutes first to be able to pack them in here. And I'm just at my max for this little Instant Pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook this for maybe 40, no, that probably is too long. Uh, maybe like 20 minutes and then just let it naturally release and that should be plenty of time. And then we can go ahead and get the treat started. Okay, so for these first ones, we're gonna do the peanut butter pumpkin one. And so I'm going to cut this wheat flour a little bit. I'm gonna do one cup of this. And then a cup and a half of an all-purpose. I was gonna try to go with no eggs just so that we could roll it out without having to worry about the egg part, but I completely ran out of flax meal just the other day. So here we are. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go with the salt next. Half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of cinnamon, and then I'm gonna whisk that together. And then add half cup pumpkin, two tablespoons of peanut butter, that's probably a little bit more than that, and then two eggs. These are not eggs from our chickens, as you can see from the size. Uh-oh, our food burned. I was worried about that. That's what I get for trying to cram it into the small one. 
Yeah, I think this is supposed to be a pretty dry dough just so that it dries out really well. So I think that's probably good enough. It still has some sort of bigger cracks in it, but looks pretty good. There was a little bit of stuff left in here, but I did not incorporate that at a certain point. I just felt like whatever was on the dough, I should just incorporate and then be done. Oh, it smells good. It smells peanut buttery and cinnamony. Before I start rolling out, I'm gonna get the other batter mixed up. Okay, I got the food moved over to the larger Instant Pot and I have never transferred something from the small one to the large one or vice versa. And when I grabbed it, the edges were nice and cool and I didn't even think about the fact that the bottom would be absolutely scorching. And I totally burnt my hand and it really got me good, it hurts. Um, so. If you ever need to deal with a burning Instant Pot, make sure to not touch the bottom. Now for the next recipe, it calls for applesauce, half cup applesauce, half cup of pumpkin. I'm just gonna put a full cup of pumpkin in because I don't have applesauce. And it also calls for a quarter cup of water. Now the other one didn't, and I think that it's a nice dryness, like I mentioned. And so I'm gonna hold off on the water and just see how it comes together. And I feel if I feel like it could use a little bit more moisture. I will add it. It does have a lot of peanut butter, so that's gonna add a lot more moisture as well. So let's go ahead and get the flour in first. My good measuring spoons are dirty, so we're gonna have to go with a little one. So two and a half cups total. So a teaspoon of cinnamon. Go ahead and mix those. Those are the only dry ingredients. Do half I'm sorry, a full cup of pumpkin. When I put the food back in the Instant Pot, I also threw in those veggies that I didn't have room for in the small one. So I'm just going to eyeball this. That's about three quarters of a cup. Two eggs. Always wash your hands after touching it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and grate my carrot. It looks about right. I started grating the, the bigger grating, and then I thought, well, if I'm rolling these into cookies, maybe I should do the finer grating. So I switched over. So we have a little bit of both. This already feels a lot more moist. Okay, that is incredibly sticky, as you can see. I might actually add a little bit more flour and work it in before I roll these out. We've got the Instant Pot working up its way to pressure. We've got a little bit cleaned up, but I'll wash the counter after we're done rolling these out. So now we're gonna roll a little bit out of each, cook a little bit, uh, do a little sample of both on the cookie sheet at the same time. And then we'll see, and then we'll see what the pup thinks. So even though we have a big dog, he's a Newfoundland and he is, I feel like he's a smaller Newfie weight wise, but he's incredibly tall and he weighs about hundred pounds, but he still likes little treats because he's sort of dainty in that way. Even if you give him a big treat, it'll break up into tons of little pieces. So this cookie cutter, for example, is so huge. This would be like a meal for him. So I'm, let me show you these things that I got. These are all the cookie cutters. There's paws paw and then dog bones. So it looks like there's four of each and I'm going to go with the little ones. I think these three are probably going to be the best. This one is even getting a little big for him. Um, I have a neighbor who's got a dog who has a very strong chewing instinct and so some of these might be kind of fun for them. Maybe I could make some bigger ones and then gift those to our neighbors. But for our, our birdie boy, we're gonna to stick to the purple and green little ones. Let's work with this first dough we did. So this is just the pumpkin peanut butter. It's a lot drier, I think it's gonna be a little easier. I cannot believe that that first recipe called for water. That's just, that would be, I feel like that'd be a big mess on my hands. I feel like you can always add those kinds of things in if you want, but it's harder to take that moisture out. not professional rolling skills here. Most of these seem to call for them to be printed out, uh, rolled out to three eighths to a half an inch thick. 
That's a little on the thinner side, but so cute. I wonder if you could even stamp it again and have it be maybe something like that. <laughs> and then you've got two. And I've mentioned this before, but I'm not a big fan of using parchment paper when making cookies and things like that. But because these don't have a lot of fat besides the peanut butter, like, a, like an oily fat, like a butter or something like that, I decided to put a piece of parchment paper down because I didn't want them to stick to the pan. These are perfect for our big, big dog. Let's give this other dough a try. It made a lot more too. There was more of everything except flour and eggs. This is super sticky, so I'm just gonna be very liberal with that flour. Okay, I honestly think that this size and this shape is my funnest, is my favorite to cut out. Um, now the thing with the carrot one is you can see here maybe there's the carrot shreds can be kind of hard to get through. I feel like if you had a carrot puree or something like that, that'd be better. Or any vegetable puree could go in its place if you had, I don't know, peas or squash. Not only am I putting multiple sizes on a sheet, but I'm pulling, putting multiple recipes on the same sheet, which could also prove to be a little tricky. So I'm just gonna babysit. I don't have any sort of fancy equipment. I have nothing but the basics here. So it's just gonna be me kind of babysitting things and seeing how it goes. Okay, I'm just taking a look at these now and the little ones definitely need to come off the tray and possibly the smallest prints as well. You can see what's happening here. These bottoms are darkening ooh, hot, quite a bit before they are completely crunchy. So I'm going to flip these and maybe bring them to the top rack so they can finish out. Ooh, ooh, that's really has a really good snap to it. So those are done too. I'm guessing... Oh, that one's a little soft to the touch. Yeah, those are a little soft yet, but they're a little thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these bones off. I tried to separate them out by size a little bit just so that they'll hopefully evenly cook the rest of the way. These ones will be done a little sooner, but even the small ones have a little bit of kind of push in the middle. So we'll get these back in. While the dog biscuits or dog treats are finishing up, I thought I would get into this pot, mix it around and get it into some containers so you can kind of show, so I can kind of show you how I store this. Pretty interesting. Looks like a lot of the moisture got soaked up. This made a lot more than I think I intended to make, but it's okay, Brutus will eat it. And he might just think that it is for him. Brutus, what do you think? Is that for you? <laughs> I don't know how he knows the difference between when I'm cooking for us and when I'm cooking for him. Brutus, what do you smell? <laughs> All right, and this meat, these steaks are actually cube steaks, so they are very tender to begin with, and they're sort of just like mush in here. It's just barely one step up from a ground meat. 
I'm just going to start portioning these out into these containers. This might have been a clue for him because he knows, even though we also use these containers for our food, I've just got a ton of them. They're so fantastic. He knows when these come out that there might be something, that there might be something for him too. These obviously are steaming a ton. I'm going to let these cool off without a lid in our back porch. And then that way it won't get our fridge all warm. But once these are cooled down to the outside temperature, then I will put them in a lid. I'll probably put one in the fridge so we can feed that to him maybe today and tomorrow. And then I will put one, then I'll put two in the freezer. We sometimes cut up like some apple and put that in fresh, just kind of on top, mix it around. Sometimes we do half and half where we'll do some of this, some of his dry food. It's just kind of never always the same thing. If you have vegetables that are, you know, needing to come out of your freezer, you can throw some of those in with this. You obviously don't want to give them like moldy food, but if you have things that are ready to expire, soon to expire, that you don't think you'll eat, this can be a great way to use it up. And that made the perfect amount for all three of these containers. Okay, so I'm going to get these outside cooling down. And next up, we will have Brutus's taste test. Are you ready, Brutus? Are you ready? That's as close to a yes as we will get. Okay, for Brutus's taste test, we've got one of the peanut butter pumpkin ones and then one of the peanut butter carrot ones. Brutus. You didn't even smell the other one, buddy. Well, he seems to like it. <laughs> Want my other one? Oh, yeah. So when it comes to stuff like this, he's just not very picky. But I don't know if you could hear that, but the second one was so much crunchier. Oh, a little bit on the ground. The first one, there was no crumbs that fell on the ground. Well, good boy, Broody. Good boy. I should have made you sit, silly. Oh, he found his crumb. Brutus, can you sit? Mm-hmm. Oh, good boy. You want another one? Oh, you do? I'll give you a mini one this time. Okay, booty. So Brutus really liked the treats, but like I said, he's not very picky with stuff like that. We got basically six meals made for Brutus and two, a bunch of treats. And we also got some for our neighbors, which is kind of fun. If you have made dog treats and you have any tips or suggestions, I would greatly appreciate it. While I've made the food before, this is the first time making dog treats. If you like this dog cooking video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of what comes out of my kitchen, please subscribe and we will see you soon.